So, Mark Rauscher, I'm the Coastal Preservation Manager for uh, a nonprofit uh, organization called the Surfrider Foundation. Um, I'll give you a little background and start with that so you can sort of understand where we're coming from uh, for what, what we're trying to do. Um, the key part in our mission statement is we protect the world's oceans, waves, and beaches. We basically protect the coast. We're an environmental organization, so, but we focus on the coast. Um, we've been around since 1984. Uh, a group, um, group of surfers started it in Malibu, actually. They said, hey, these guys are trying to ruin our beach, our surf spot, hey, let's get together. They happened to be engineers and attorneys that, that, were, that, that saw that threat. So they got together, formed this organization. Uh, now we've grown to over 100 volunteer chapters worldwide, um, 80 of them uh, in the U.S. Um, we'll, we'll show you a, a little map, and we, we think we have about 200,000 supporters after this uh, across all the different channels. Um, so when I talk about chapters, this is what a chapter looks like. You know, these are beach people. They go to the beach, they hang out, <coughs> and, but they try to, uh, they, you know, they look at environmental issues, they look at trash at the beach, they look at water quality, is the water dirty? Um, they do education and awareness uh, for, for their communities. Here's sort of a map of, of where our chapters in the U.S. at least are. You can see we're on all the coasts, including the Great Lakes. Yes, people do surf on the Great Lakes, you'll notice. Um, so what I do, um, actually I'll, I'll, I'll go back. So what we do is we're, we're a small, uh, we have a very small staff, uh, about 30 or 40 people, um, primarily based just up the road here in San Clemente, California. And, and our job is to support all these volunteer chapters. So we provide them with tools uh, that they can use in, in their communities to take on environmental issues. So what are those issues? Uh, so beach access is, is one. Uh, basically, can you get to the beach? Uh, a lot of towns uh, have different rules, and private homeowners try to be, block people from going to the beach. Well, I, actually, I'd like to ask, how many of you live near the coast? OK, and how many like to go to the beach? <laughs> hopefully at least at least once a year, a couple times a year, hopefully, right? Uh, a few of us go a few more times than that. Um, um, but you have to be able to get there, right? That's, that's the key. Um, and, and where those accesses are, whether it's a giant parking lot and you walk, or, or you're through a little neighborhood and there's a little tiny pathway and you happen to know just where that little cool little beach is, um, you still you have to be able to get there. Um, water quality is when you get to that beach and, and you go swimming. Is the water dirty? Is it polluted? Is it going to make you sick? Um, these are the kinds of things that 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 we want to know and and try to make sure that we're improving it if there is a problem. Um, so coastal preservation is what? How much sand is there on the beach? Is it eroding? Does it change after big storms? Uh, are there structures or houses that are impeding uh, the movement, the natural uh, movement of of sand? and the natural ability of those beaches. Um, and then ocean ecosystems. Is the, the environment, the, the habitat that lives off um, just out, offshore of that beach, is it healthy, is it protected? Um, can, can fishermen come? There's actually healthy populations of the fish. Um, and, and what sort of, you know, there's a handful of, of different issues. Um, and then of course, surf spots. Everybody uh, wants to protect surf spots. So we actually have threats. We've actually lost many surf spots where they've been. Uh, Dana Point Harbor, just up the road. There used to be a world-class spot there back in the 60s. They built a harbor on top of it. Um, it's gone. And so we're, what we do is we try to protect that. We try to keep those uh, in place so that we don't lose those as we go into the future. <clears throat> How do we do that? With our volunteers. So all these 80 chapters, they're, they're all volunteer at the chapter level, um, and, and they get together, they look at what issues are, are, are important to their communities um, on the ground. Um, and what we do uh, from our standpoint is, is we provide training, we provide tools, so we go around, we travel around the country, we do seminars, we do uh, conferences, we train them, um, give them, the, give them the right tools to test the water themselves if that's what needs to be done. Um, all at, at you know at, at the same level that the EPA would be doing um, basic science and, and basically taking these really technical issues and and boiling it down so that everyday people can understand them. So how do we do that with our expertise? Um, we have a handful of staff scientists. We have attorneys that understand all the different policies and regulations about about the beach. 
Um, the environmental issues team, this is a, these are professional engineers and scientists who work in the private sector, but are members and, and support us by, by providing us uh, with their expertise and, and helping with specific issues so that, um, uh, so that the chapters, if, if it's something that's more technical than, than our small staff can handle, we actually have somebody who's in that field and understands the permitting processes and all these things. Uh, we have interns and from grad school every summer and throughout the year we have interns that come in providing lots more research, giving back that support. And then all those activists that are out in the field, some of them have been working on, on issues for 10, 15, 20 years and they've become experts on their own even though, you know, he's Joe Schmo who, who uh, you know, actually maybe he's a, he's a coder, but he's, he, he, he's been dealing with this issue for so long that he's got his head completely wrapped around it and he knows the, the issue top to bottom. And so he can provide uh, some of that expertise too. So as we have all this information and, and um, we have issues, we have campaigns, so, so they, they run campaigns to try to influence decision makers, right? Um, and we get questions all the time, both from the public, from the activists, technical questions. Uh, so we need to be able to answer them in, in a timely manner, get that feedback so that it can help them in their issues. Um, we research and document those. But what we noticed over time, of course, is that the same questions keep coming up over and over. And you know, 10 years ago, uh, you know, the internet was just starting to ramp up. Wikipedia was just starting to ramp up. The general public was just figuring this stuff out. Um, and it wasn't there. So we, we figured out, oh, hey, we need to, since we're answering these questions all the time, uh, we need to have a single place so that we can just say, oh, oh, Red Tide, yeah, we already researched that. All the information is here. Go on the website and, and look at it. So we created uh, Coastal A to Z. This was just a basic HTML page. Um, it, it actually was in a, um, in, a, in, a, in a SQL database, all the information. Our webmaster built it. and. But, um, you know, so there's basic definitions of stuff, and then all the, all the hyperlinks, obviously, are, are longer articles. Um, the problem, of course, is that, well, you have to go through the webmaster to make any changes and to get any new stuff up, and there's this long process, and it's this painful thing. Um, so, what's the answer? Uh, in 2010, we realized, hey, let's build a wiki. So, um, so we did. And um, <coughs> we call it Beachopedia. And basically, it's, this is our, our place to house all the information that we gather, make it easy for, for staff who are not technical people, um, who are scientists, but not um, uh, uh, web technical, I guess. Um, um, all of our activists, volunteers, to be able to plug in their expertise. Um, obviously, it's very intentionally looks a lot like Wikipedia. Uh, that, it, was, it was a great design. I thought it was a cool design idea, um, and we had some great help. Uh, developing the skin for it and building out the basic structure. Uh, so right now, what do we have in it? Short one, two, three sentence definitions, uh, multi-page articles that can be, you know, your full Wikipedia <coughs> article, fully referenced, internal, external links, all that stuff. Um, we have the State of the Beach Report, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, it's, a, it's sort of an inter, an, another section that's spe that specifically focuses on coastal management. It's a very large document. I think we figured out if we, if we printed it out, um, it would be something like 1,500 pages printed for a report. And this is on, on one topic. Um, daily coastal factoids, these we, we actually, um, since 2001, we have had, we've been pushing out uh, previously through a listserv. Now we, we plug it into Beachopedia. Uh, just blurbs um, uh, from, a, from a recent news article, from a blog, something of interest that has to do with the issues that we deal with. And, and we've been pushing those out and we've been storing them. Um, so we've moved all those into Beachopedia and we have this cool automated system that I'll show you. Um, all the chapters are, all their information is logged in here. And we have multilingual because we're international, we're in Europe, in Japan, uh, in South America. We provided those tools for, for the, uh, uh, to have multilingual pages or other languages. Um, so State of the Beach, this is, again, this is a, a sort of this separate report. So we have this Coastal A to Z. State of the Beach is, this, is a report that we've been doing for 10 years. 
and it's, it's a state-by-state -state assessment where we look at the coastal uh, management programs of every state, we analyze it, um, and we grade them, and we do surveys, we talk to the coastal managers, these are, these are basically bureaucrats in state government who manage the coast. Um, and we, we talk to them, we get their feedback, and we provide all this information. Um, and and now, that, now that it's in the wiki, it's continually updated rather than a once a year report and you know kind of static. Um, this way it's, it's a lot more uh, alive. Um, so inside Beachipedia there's this state of the beach section which I think, just I'll show you real quick, let's see if this, that does not work. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So the idea is that we look at, like I said, we look at each state. So if I look at state reports, pulls up a map, and there we go. So I'll go to California. And then so we have big pages that document all of the coastal management. We rate each of those issues that we talked about, beach access, water quality, beach erosion, all those things, how the, how the state manages these issues, how they react to it. Um, pluses and minuses, uh, you know, the good things, the bad things. This is, again, it's sort of a, it's, it's an evaluation of what they do. When we then look at each indicator, you get into an even much larger page, which again looks just like a, a regular wiki page, but goes through, uh, lays out all the policies that are there, um, inventories, so, uh, you know, what's documented, and this is kind of what we wanted to do. We wanted to go out and find what is documented uh, in the world of coastal management, because all these states do things differently, and we wanted to bring it all into a single repository, um, which we have done, and, and it is, is essentially the largest uh, repository of coastal management information in the, in the entire U.S. Um, nobody else has anything like this. Uh, Coast Commission and, you know, pages and pages and pages. So I won't bore you with pages and pages and pages. Hopefully. Okay. So international. Um, Surfrider Europe is actually really huge. They have, I think, I think they have chapters in 10 or 12 different countries. Um, South America and Brazil and Argentina and Japan and Australia. Um, and so on the site, we, we've provided, uh, you know, we set up the system to be able to accept and, and link uh, the languages and translations of all the pages for, so that the activists, volunteers, remember these aren't professionals, volunteers, um, in, in all these areas could, would, would be able to, to do it. So now we'll get into a little bit of technical. In order to do that, to help them, to help these non-technical people um, provide, inf uh, get the information, um, we had some nice forms built. Uh, it starts when you talk about languages. Um, well, first, these are the basic categories here. Um, but at the top, we ask, is, is it in a language other than English? Um, what this does is it sets it up so that the English page is actually the repository for all the other languages. So if there's a translation, and you'll see, it links back, it looks back to the English page and then says, oh, okay, look, there's Japanese, there's Spanish, there's Hungarian. And each translation page then gets a list of all of the um, all of the you have other Hungarian surfers. What's that? You have Hungarian surfers. Uh, we did I say? Yeah. I thought Sorry. you need water for surfing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's probably <laughs> surfers that speak Hungarian. Hungarian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Spanish and so so the the two languages that we prim that right now or sorry the three languages that primarily are on the site where we've had activists actually active are French, Spanish, and Japanese. Um, those are the three main. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. So, so then again, this is where you just all you do is you type in the page that it's linking to, and the English page stores that information. Um, so then here you can so this is these are two different obviously. So that's what the page would look like, and you get a nice <coughs> box linking to the other translations, and that's what the code this is translation field, um, and then who it goes to, and your basic um, nice clean code, I think. Um, Technicians did a very really nice job of, of doing that. When you get to the actual translated page, so now you're in French and you ask, is this page, this was the same form, but all those other ca English categories disappear, all you do is you answer 
that it's in French. Um, and then it looks back, it, uh, it, it knows that the English language documented that littoral was actually documented on the shoreline page, and, and then it, uh, it finds all the other translations that are available. So, um, again, for a small nonprofit, I think this is pretty cool that we were able to do this stuff. Uh, and there's the, you know, the basic code, so on each translated page, that's all you have to do. Uh, the factoids. So, if you um, back on that front on the front page, we post those daily factoids right there. Um, so, if we act, if we have uh, frequent visitors, um, we again made a nice form uh, to to get it into the system. Um, and then what happens is each day um, we have a bot that uh, I think at 9 a.m. checks that day's uh, factoid. At, um, sees if this emailed slash tweeted box is, is a yes, and if no, then it tweets it and sends it out to everywhere it needs and checks the box for us. And so it's all automated. So all we have. To, so what, what's great is that we can now queue up, you know, any number of these factoids ahead of time. So oh, we're going on vacation for a week. I just queue it up for the whole for the whole next week, and it gets sent out automatically. Um, For the chapter information, uh, again, basic information uh, in, in, in the form, we ask, you know, try to get all the contact. What are all the stuff? How can we aggregate everything that they're doing out in the field into a single page? Um, Facebook, RSS, Twitter, all these things that these these regular people are doing out there, talking about these issues, and then bring it into a chapter page so we get their location their Twitter and Facebook and blog pages, their, all their feeds, um, contact info, all of the, the all of this info actually also feeds back into that state of the beach page. So each state has lists and contacts for all of the chapters. And again, it's referencing back to that, to that previous form. Uh, uh, we also, it didn't show up so well, but we have, uh, Chris made this really cool, it, what chapters are close and finds a prox does a proximity um, check to see what other chapters might be close to that one. So, I was fast. I talk really fast. Um, I do want to uh, absolutely acknowledge Alex and your own uh, from Wikiworks. They skinned the whole thing, uh, did a really great job. They built the basic structure, a lot of the stuff. And, and, and Chris here um, did so much customization, and the bots and, and, and all this stuff was, has been a, a great help uh, and, and support. So, and of course, all of you guys, because, you know, um, this collaborative open source stuff makes it really easy for nonprofits for us to be able to, to do this kind of stuff. We're having a lot of fun with it. Um, so really, you know, th thanks to all of you as well. And I'll leave you. <laughs> What's that? Take questions if they're overly technical. I'll refer you to Chris. Um. <laughs> I guess I should note that all of the the mapping stuff, the maps that were displayed uh, in Mark's presentation with showing all the chapters all over the country, uh, all all of the uh, proximity searches where on the chapter pages it displays other chapters nearby, all of that stuff is done uh, storing semantic data as far as the chapters and their locations and then uh, produced all the fly with queries and meta queries uh, to display them using uh, SMW and semantic <coughs> maps. So that, that's one of the ways that, uh, that the semantic media wiki software is, is, is used to uh, link a lot of this data together uh, within the wiki. Uh, also with the, uh, the keeping track of the article translations, again, all of those things are stored as, as strings, uh, as properties of the page. And so when a translated version of an article, uh, when it loads the page, it checks to say, am I in English? If I'm not in English, what's the English page that I'm a translation of? And then from that page, it queries and displays the other pages in other languages. So it's actually a series of embedded queries that, that all uh, rely on each other to uh, produce the final output there.
Um, what's your experience working with bots? Uh, working with bots, um, uh, uh, what kind of uh, language is used and uh, <laughs> how is uh, all, all the bots are done in Perl. Perl? Uh, just because it was the, the scripting language that I was most familiar with. Uh, there is a very good existing MediaWiki bot module uh, that interacts with the API uh, in, in a very clean manner and if you need to do weird things with it, you can even under access the, the underlying structures and, uh, and pull less cleanly formatted data if you need, need to do various things. And practically, they've been uh, very reliable and I mean, haven't had any, any surprise with, with that? Ha haven't had any major problems with it. Um, I mean, it, it not only obviously has to deal with the media wiki uh, interaction, but it loads uh, various uh, Twitter libraries and things like that to uh, then take and format the factoids that are that are sent out uh, via a, a Twitter Perl module as well. Uh, in, in addition to that, there's also actually some other maintenance bots that sort of run behind the scenes. Uh, even as small as this is, going through and checking all the external links to make sure none of them have changed uh, on some, some sort of a normal basis is uh, a daunting task. Uh, having a bot go through and pull lists of all the links and what pages they're on and going through and checking every link and flagging pages for review if they have links that return uh, errors on the HTTP, request, HTTP requests uh, it is a way to at least reduce a lot of the administration overhead for, uh, for maintaining the site. Question in the back. Got it over. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay.